Okay, question 24. Voltaic cell uh, with copper, copper two plus is one half cell, manganate as the other half cell. Okay, you will notice platinum is needed because there is no metal there. It should in fact have MN two plus there as well uh, in the data book, just to show you what two equations are. Basically you have your copper, copper two plus, which is that one there, the plus 0.34, and then the manganate MN two plus, which is plus 1.51. Now, again, they should include both oxidizer and reducer. They haven't. There we go. QCA once again. Okay. Now then, predict the direction of the electron flow in the voltaic cell. All right. If you are combining two half cells, um, the easiest way of predicting which way they will go, remember one has to be an oxidation and one has to be a reduction. So since these are all written as reductions, you're going to have to reverse one of them. The one you have to reverse is always the one above. Because by reversing the copper, you will get a value of minus 0.34. And by keeping this going forwards, you'll get plus 1.51 the overall will give you a positive value, and that means it is spontaneous, okay? I tell mine to use what I call the anti-clockwise rule, so look at it like that. The upper one goes backwards, the lower one goes forwards, anti-clockwise. Okay, and it says, um, predict the direction of the electron flow. Well, obviously, copper is the one giving up the electrons, so effectively, copper will be the way where the electrons are generated and they flow from the copper half cell over to the manganate half cell. Um, you can see their answer. You can see manganate has a bigger plus value. It's a stronger oxidizing agent and therefore it will be the one to get reduced and gain electrons from copper, which is oxidized. The standard electropotential will simply be the 1.51 take away 0.34 to give you 1.17 volt. Uh, what will you see? Well, if copper is becoming copper ions, now copper ions are blue. So therefore, the blue color will get darker in that half cell. In the other half cell, manganate will become Mn2+. Now, manganate is a dark purple ion, and Mn2 plus is a very pale pink. So this half cell will effectively get lighter in color. Okay, this will get darker, this will get lighter. Okay, copper concentration will increase, it will become darker, Mn concentration will decrease, and solution will become lighter. Uh, equilibrium formed between two cobalt species. Here's the equation for the reaction. Le Chatelier, what would happen if you added silver nitrate to this solution here? Uh, sorry, to the, to the equilibrium. Now, again, I don't think this is fair because this requires you to remember something you did in unit two. And that is the fact that the silver ion will react with the chloride ion and form insoluble silver chloride. I mean, they will justify it, QCA will justify it by saying, we give them a table of solubilities. They can see silver chloride is insoluble. I'm sorry, I don't think that's fair. I think the question should be exclusively from unit three and four. But the bottom line is the silver ion will remove chloride ions from the equilibrium. Le Chatelier says the system will oppose this. Therefore, they will try and uh, return the chloride ion by the reverse reaction being favored. Okay, so you can see the answer down here it shifts to the left, and effectively, the blue solution will effectively become pink. So, this will effectively become lighter in color as it becomes pinker. If you put it into hot water, it turns more blue. Well, if that's the case, then it's clearly moving in the forward direction. Now, it's doing that again to oppose the change. So therefore, it's trying to cool itself back down again, which means the forward reaction must be absorbing heat and therefore is endothermic. Okay, where is it? Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, graph represents changes in concentration over time for three gaseous molecules. 
There's the equation for the reaction. You can see we are starting with these two. And we have no xy at the start. So as equilibrium is reached, their concentrations will gradually decrease. This one will gradually increase. A point will be reached there where every one of them stays the same. Therefore, equilibrium is reached at that point there. So xy obviously is a product. Uh, the equilibrium constant, well, remember you put xy's concentration squared over these concentrations multiplied together. xy would be 3 squared. Uh, x2 would be 2.5. y2 would be 2. So 2 times 2.5 is 5. So we've got 9 over 5 and whatever that works out to be 1.8. Okay. Now again, I've copied this as it was from their answer guide. That 1.8 needs to be in the box there. Does the equilibrium favor the reactants or products? Well, if K is bigger than 1, then clearly it's favoring products because products are on the top, reactants are on the bottom. Okay. Um, arsenic acid reacts with nitride to form arsenic acid. Oxidation number of arsenic would be, well, hydrogen is plus one, oxygen is minus two, do a bit of maths, and arsenic will be plus three. Half equations to balance the reaction. Okay, these, these are quite tricky. Now, these equations are not in the data book. You've got to work them out for yourself. To do that, you're going to have to put the arsenous acid on one side and what it forms this compound on the other side, okay? So they would initially be in the equation, just then. And then nitrate, ions, nitrate, giving NO2 would be in the other half equation. Now, what you've got to do is then balance the equations by first of all balancing the atoms, and then by balancing the charges. Well, if you've got H3 there and H3 there, you're off to a good start. You've got AS there, AS there, that's great. But with three oxygens on one side and four on the other, you need more oxygen on this side. If you need oxygen, it has to go in as water. You just need to remember that, I'm afraid. But by introducing water, we've increased the number of hydrogens on the left. We therefore need hydrogen on the right, always as H plus ions. So we now balance the atoms, which is simply a case of putting a two in front of that. And then you will see that by putting two there, there are two pluses on the right. There's no charge on the left. So we need two minuses to cancel that charge. And that gives us the half equation. This one is formed in a similar way. Three oxygens on the left, two on the right, H2O goes in. That introduces hydrogen, therefore H plus ions go in. No charge on this side. Two pluses, one minus, another minus is needed to balance, okay, or to cancel the charge. Once you've got your two half equations to, to put them together, as you know, double this one so the electrons cancel and then simply add them together. Uh, the species that's reduced effectively, obviously, is the nitride ion. You can see there it's gaining electrons. Also, you could look at it from the point of view the oxidation number of nitrogen is plus 5 there and plus 4 there. A drop in oxidation number means reduction. And finally, the titration curve formed when 20 mil of butylamine, that's a weak acid, pKa10, is titrated with 0.1 of hydrochloric, a strong acid. Okay, so pKa10 means you're starting up there. Okay, I've got the answer from the um from the book um it, it won't be 10 by the way guys that's the pka which is obtained at the half equivalence point so if you've got butylamine uh, i would start it usually around about 11 or 12 maybe it's it's a weak acid uh, a weak base sorry don't go up as far as 14 even 13 would be too high 11 or 12 would be a good starting point you can see their answer has started somewhere in between the two okay now then, you gradually then drop that until you get to the end point where obviously there's a rapid drop in pH. 
Now that will occur at 20 mil of hydrochloric. The concentrations of both base and acid are exactly the same. It doesn't matter if it's strong or weak. We're not talking about uh, its, its extended dissociation. We're talking about a simple one-to-one -one ratio here. And therefore, you want to drop it, as you can see, at 20. Okay. Now, what does it ask us to do? Uh, sketch the titration curve. Um, well, here's the answer given by QCAA. You can see they've marked the equivalence point. Again, how many marks are given? Uh, three marks. So I'm guessing they've given probably one for the general shape, one for the end point at 20, and probably um, one for pointing out the equivalence point is the halfway point there. All right, that's a little bit low. The equivalence point is the halfway point there. Um, well, you can see they've, um, they've marked it with a dotted line, even though the arrow is pointing a little bit low. Right, guys, that uh, covers paper one.